Um, we have a pretty unique opportunity to uh, hear a little bit more about the college recruiting game. So if I call her something, you call them and they're all the athletes in our high school. My name is Pam Morse. I'm one of the counselors here. I see many of my students sitting in this audience. So thanks a lot for coming out and uh, listening to what our presenter has to say. Um, so just a little bit about the presenter. Uh, John Scott is a former high school, college, and professional basketball player, and has also been a high school, college, and professional basketball coach. He has produced more books, audio CDs, and DVDs on college recruiting than any coach in history, 15 to be exact. He's a national seminar speaker on college recruiting. He speaks to dozens of high schools annually. He has appeared on numerous radio shows as one of the leading experts on college recruiting worldwide, including ESPN, K-pop, The Sports Zone, and WFAN in New York, the country's largest sports radio station. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce Coach John Scott. I'm going to stay down here, okay? <laughs> Good evening. Glad to be here with you. Can everybody hear me okay? I have an old coach's voice. I'm used to being in a gym. My players can hear me with 1,000 people in there or 10,000 people. So hopefully my vocal cords will hold up. You okay in the back? You can hear me all right? Yes. Okay, very good. I'm glad to be here with all of you this evening. Now, while we're here, first thing I want to know is anyone in this room that is a current student athlete, I would like you to stand up. If you're a current student athlete in high school, I would like you to stand up. Now, listen carefully. There's going to be a quiz at the end of this evening. How many of you have cell phones? How many of you can text message? We don't have service in here. That's okay. <laughs> what I want you to do is I want you to shut your cell phones off while you're in here talking with me. Parents, you can leave yours on. You have children at home. If you would, put it on vibrate. Student athletes, shut them off. I like you already. You know why? You have a Boston Red Sox hat, and I grew up in Boston. But if you have a hat on, sunglasses on, I want you to take them off. Go ahead and sit down for me. <laughs> Either your back pocket is ringing, or that's your phone. <laughs> oh, I got you. Now, why is this important? Two years ago, Bob Stoops, the head coach of the University of Oklahoma football, had a student athlete visiting on campus. And for the first 15 minutes that Coach Stoops was with this recruit, walking around showing the athlete the campus, the athlete is doing this the whole time. After about the 15th minute, Coach Stoops said, William, here's what we're going to do. Go back over and see Coach Mulligan at my office. Do you know where the office is? Yeah. Not yes, sir. Yeah. Good. Walk back over there. He's putting you on a plane. You're going home. You're never playing for Oklahoma. You're going to talk to a college coach. Give him respect because they're going to give you $100,000 to $200,000 to help pay for your college education. Now, if you don't want that, that's okay by me. But I'm going to tell you, they got lots of choices. There's 15.2 million high school athletes in the United States, and they're not all at Downey High School. They're not there. So you have to understand there's a process to this. College recruiting is a process. It is not a privilege. You have probably five to ten student athletes that come out of this high school every year that might be elite, NCAA, Division I, major college, blue chip athletes. That's a lot of adjectives, isn't it? That's because they're good. <laughs> I mean, they're off the charts good. Your athletic director's back here. Coach, is that a fair number? Five to ten? Last year we had seven. Last year you had seven. It's not abnormal for large schools. One, actually 0.08%, less than 1% of all high school athletes will get to go on that are seniors and play NCAA Division I. It's a very small number. Does it mean you cannot play in college? It does not mean that. You can play in college if you're willing to be a student and an athlete. 
Now everybody thinks they know something about college recruiting. I love talking to people. I, I came out this morning and I flew on the airline and the flight attendant saw my shirt. It said college coaches. And she said, I need to talk to you. My son's at a junior college at Diablo Valley College up in the Bay Area. Got a full ride his freshman year to University of Oregon football. They only give out 85 full rides. You ever wonder why they have 140 guys on the sidelines, but they only give out 85 full rides? It's how they fund their sports programs, in part. Now, if you're a top 25 Division I football or Division I basketball team, you have some money. If you're not a Division I team and you're baseball, soccer, volleyball, track and field, lacrosse, any other sport, they don't have a lot of money. In fact, the average recruiting budget to find athletes nationwide is about $2,000 a year. No one's getting on a plane to come to LA to recruit your student athlete if you haven't heard from a D1 school yet and you're a sophomore. No one's coming here to do that. The only reason they're coming to LA is for Disneyland or Tommy Burgers. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> so you need to be crystal clear about that, that you will need good game footage and good highlights. And don't blame your coaches if they don't have game footage. It's not their responsibility. Nothing in their contract says, A, they have to help you with recruiting, or B, they have to help you with game footage. I promise they do not make enough in a year to probably cover their gas money. So we're going to talk about that a few minutes later. But I want you to understand, talk to people all the time, and now this flight attendant says we need some help did not get a renewal on his athletic scholarship at University of Oregon. Everybody thinks, or most people think, athletic scholarships are good for how many years? They're good for one. We got a guy on our staff that played at Iowa State. He's 6'6", 327 pounds. And he's not built like this. He's a tank. I mean, he is a brick wall. Major college blue chip athlete. Had eight Division I offers. Stayed at home. He grew up in Iowa. He stayed there. That's the offer he took. Here's the problem for you. Nobody knows you're out here. Nobody knows you're here. Now, you have an advantage. California is a top 10 recruiting state. Why is it a top 10 recruiting state? It's all population-based. Remember the presidential elections, and they draw up those really pretty maps, and they got blue states and red states? And you got to win California. Texas, Florida, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan. It's population based. There are athletes in Montana and North Dakota that are just as good as you or just as good as some D1. There just aren't as many of them. So nobody's flying to North Dakota or South Dakota unless they want to see Mount Rushmore, are they? They're just not going to go there. So you've got to understand this is part of the process. How many student athletes in this room would like to play college sports? Okay, very good. What are you doing to get there? You need to ask yourself that. These are the rules for the NCAA. This is the College Bound Guide for the Student Athlete 2011-2012 edition. It's 24 pages. Anybody want to guess how many pages actually exist for NCAA rules? One page? No, that's incorrect. Anybody? What's that? 24 pages? What did you say? This is 24 pages. 24 pa 24 but the real rules, the total rules, how many pages do you think exist? 500. Over 1,200. 1,200. 400 for Division I, 400 for Division II, 400 for Division III. Doesn't include NAIA or five other governing bodies that have college sports. There's a lot of rules, regulations, and guidelines. This is a simplification of NCAA rules. So I need a volunteer. Who wants to come up and help me? I need a student. Thank you, young man. Come on up here. What year in school are you? 2015. 2015? So you're a rookie? I'm a freshman, yes, sir. You're a rookie, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Good. Very good. Whisper in my ear what your GPA is. 3.8. 3.8, I can say that out loud. <laughs> I just came right out. I didn't mean for that to happen. All right, what's your first name? Manny. 
Manny, Coach Scott, yes. nice to meet you. You see, skip that one, you see these four? Yes, sir. One, two, three, four. Can you read those out loud so everybody can hear you? Men, men's basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Spit that out. You are a freshman, aren't you? <laughs> Men's basketball, women's basketball, and football. And? Other sports. Read those one more time, please, without the... <laughs> Men's basketball, women's basketball, football, and other sports. What sport do you play? Football. Football. Other sports. Thank you. You did a nice job. <laughs> we didn't rehearse that. <laughs> other sports. This is Division I. Four rules categories. Men's basketball, women's basketball, football. Other sports. Why is that? August to April, you see 30 games on TV of Division I football. Do you see Division Three? No. Do you see Division Two, NAI, Junior College? No. None of it. You don't see Division I baseball, Division I volleyball, Division I soccer, Division I track and field, Division I wrestling, Division I lacrosse. You don't see any of that. Non-revenue sports. Why are they called non-revenue sports? This is very simple. Average recruiting budget is $2,000. That's why. That's coming right from the NCAA. So we're crystal clear about that. Now, let's talk about one other piece. Young lady, will you come up and help me, please? Yes. Thank you very much. Don't worry, I won't bite. What's your name? Jocelyn. Jocelyn. Coach Scott. What year at school are you? I'm a junior. You're a junior. Stand right up here so everybody can see you. You're a beautiful young lady. <laughs> I was being serious. <laughs> wow. Okay. Read that for me out loud. Student athlete. Read this out loud. Student athlete. Read that out loud. Student athletes. Are you hearing a recurring theme here? Mm -hmm. Very Student good. Athletes. Whisper in my ear your GPA. 3.6. 3.6. Oh, that's the other ear. See, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to spit that out. Go ahead. That's a good job. You're doing a good job. Student athlete. Why is being a student so important? Because you have to learn. Well, you do have to learn, but now the NCAA five years ago came out with something called the APR. Has anybody heard of the APR? It's not a race car. <laughs> Academic progress rating. The APR now says that a college or university that does not meet minimum GPA criteria as a team will have scholarships taken away. So, Jocelyn, come back up here. Thank you. I got two equal athletes. Same height, same weight, same skill set. One has a 3.6 GPA, the other one has a 2.8 GPA. Which one am I recruiting? 3.6. Does anybody doubt that? You're a smart young lady. Thank you very much. Listen carefully what I'm telling you. If you think you're going to play college sports, and you're not going to hit the books, you're mistaken. It does not happen anymore. When I was growing up, it was not in the 50s, it was in the 70s. I want to be clear about that. <laughs> so you're laughing at me again. A 2.5 GPA was considered average. Parents, you know this. A 3.0 was considered good. That's all gone away. Today, 2011, a 3.0 is considered average. A 3.5 is considered good. A 3.85 is considered excellent. And colleges will pay attention to this. And college coaches, will, it will be one of the first things that they look at to make a determination if they're going to look at you as a recruit. Now, as a college coach, I coached high school, college, and professionally. I coached in college twice. As a college coach, we're going to get 500 to 5,000 of these, and if I'm a Division I top 10 program or top 25 program, I'm going to get 5,000 of these. What are these? Players information. Resumes, player profiles. I'm going to get 500 if I'm a Division III, and I'm going to get 5 to 10,000 if I'm a Division I elite program. Do you think I'm going to look at 5,000 game films? Absolutely not. What I'm going to do is go through a process, and process number one is a mailing list. And kids get letters from UCLA, USC, Stanford, all these schools, and they think they're being recruited. They're on a mailing list. Last year, UCLA sent out over 20,000 letters. 
They signed 22 kids. You are not being recruited. It means they know your name. It does not mean that they know your game. What I'm going to do as a recruit is I'm going to look at this information, and if I don't see what I need to see, now you can't fail. You have to be honest because they'll find out. But if you have pieces missing, you're not registered with the eligibility center, you don't have a high enough SAT or ACT, you don't have a high enough GPA, you notice a student came before the athlete? Because it doesn't matter if you're King Kong in football, soccer, volleyball, or whatever else. If I can't get you into USC, which has a 28 ACT score, then I'm not going to recruit you. It's not going to happen. Now, are there academic exemptions in football? In basketball, there are, but they don't like to use them. Coaches lose their jobs over that nowadays. They don't want to have you be an exception to the rule. They want you to be the rule so they don't have to deal with the exceptions. So you get on a mailing list. Anybody can get on a mailing list. I encourage every one of you to go home tonight, find three colleges that you know the names of, go to the athletic site, fill out the recruiting questionnaire, and I guarantee you you'll get at least two letters. Does it mean they're going to offer you a $150,000 scholarship? I don't think so. This means you're on a mailing list. And the big schools can afford to have mailing lists. Now, email's made it affordable for a lot of people, hasn't it? Because it's free. So you've got to go from a mailing list to a recruiting list, and it's going to funnel down. And that recruiting list, as I look at athletes, that recruiting list tells me on paper what I'm looking for and if this is a student athlete that I might have possible interest in. So now I'm going to go from a recruiting list of anywhere between 50 kids in basketball to 500 kids in football. That's my high number now. And I'm going to start looking at highlight tapes. Four or five minutes max. I don't want to watch 20 minutes of highlights. So if you don't have a good highlight tape, you're already in trouble. You gotta have a good highlight tape. And, and please, whatever you do, don't put music on it. Do you really think college coaches have your taste in music? I mean, the worst highlight tape, it's still stuck in my head, that I ever saw as a college coach was a basketball player that was a cowboy from Wyoming. This is the only song I remember. I want to be a cowboy, you can be my cowgirl. I can't remember any other highlight tape other than that stupid tape. And I refused to recruit the kid because he had such bad taste in music. Don't put music on your highlight tapes. Coaches want to hear the sounds of the game. But you're going to need a good highlight tape. If I like what's on your highlight tape, now you're going on to my recruiting board. My recruiting board, if I need, I was a basketball guy, if I need one point guard, I'm recruiting 10 to 15 point guards for one roster opening. Doesn't seem very fair, does it? Does that seem very fair to you? Come up here and help me. It's okay, I won't hurt you. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Tell me your name. Does it bite me? Excuse me? <laughs> What's your name? Kristen. Coach Scott, Kristen, how are you? What grade are you in school? I'm a junior. You're a junior? Yeah. Whisper in my ear your GPA. 3.4. Okay, very good. 3.4, that's excellent. So, now, let me ask you a question, okay? I'm nervous. Are you nervous? Yes. Oh, good. Well, we'll, we'll, fit, out, we'll fit really good together. So, let me ask you this. I'm going to look at, what position do you play? Point guard. Oh, isn't that interesting? I need a point guard. That's perfect. I'm going to look at 10 or 15 point guards, and what's your favorite school? I don't have one. You don't have any school that you like? I like ASU. ASU? ASU. Okay. I'm the basketball coach at ASU. Really? No. <laughs> this, this is, she does laugh a lot, doesn't she? Did she get that from her mom or from you? <laughs> Let's just pretend, okay? Okay. I'm looking at 10 or 15 athletes for one roster opening, including you. You're one of those 10 or 15. You made it from the mailing list to the recruiting list to the recruiting board. Are you excited about that? Yes. Good. Why am I going to look at 10 or 15 athletes? Do you know? Have options. 
Sure. How many colleges are you going to look at if you can? As many. As many as you can? Yeah. So you're not uncomfortable with me looking at 10 or 15 other athletes? No, I'm not comfortable. <laughs> you're, you're not comfortable with that or you are comfortable with that? Yes. <laughs> Which one? I'm confused. What? Are you comfortable with me looking at 14 other no. players besides you? You don't like that? No, I'm competitive. You're competitive. But you're going to look at as many colleges as you can, right? Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is you want to cheat on me, but you don't want me to cheat on you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great job. Okay. <laughs> you see the problem I have as a college coach? I got a problem, don't I? I have to do this if I'm going to keep my job. Because other colleges are going to look at you if you're good enough. And you're going to look at other colleges. You have to get a recruiting board, and you have to get that as part of your game plan as well. That's a critical part of the puzzle. Let's talk about recruiting mistakes that almost everybody that we see makes. Mistake number one, you believe if you have average grades, but you're an exceptionally good athlete, that you're going to get recruited. That's gone by the wayside. Those days are far and few between. Mistake number two. You believe if you're a starter, if you're a captain, all league, all state, all CIF, that you're going to get recruited. Statistically, what we know from the National Federation of High School Coaches is that 75% of the student athletes that make all league in this country never get recruited. Ever. 75%. Can you be a varsity starter and still play college sports? Anybody think you can? Yes, you can. If you're a good what? Oh, you guys are getting it. A good student athlete. Because NCAA Division threes are very competitive. But if you're a varsity starter at Downey High School, you got 4,200 kids. And the average size of most high schools in this country is 1,700, half your size. I think as a college coach, I can do the math. I think you being a varsity starter at this high school makes you a pretty solid student athlete. Does that make sense to everybody? You got a chance. So there's one of your goals. My goal, whether it's starting part of the time, playing half time, whatever it is my senior year, is to be in that position at a huge high school. One of the largest high schools in the entire country is right here where you go to school. Third mistake. You believe you're going to go to a tournament, a combine, a showcase, and you're going to get discovered. I love this. This one, this one really cracks me up. As a college coach, and we'd get a new assistant coach, and you know what we used to do? We'd say, I need you to go down to this AAU tournament. Make sure you wear your college shirt, shave, put on the cologne, grease your hair, do all the nice stuff. Bring lots of business cards so that people know who you are. Coach would come back and say, Coach Scott, I got mobbed. Every parent in that place, there were thousands of them, wouldn't 